Hello everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods, back again with our review of the Voxel Lab Proxima. So, uh, I've had this printer for quite some time, and my apologies to everybody that's watching and has been waiting for this review. Uh, I know it's been a long, long time. Usually I, I put my review out in about a week's time after doing a live stream of unboxing and setting it up and whatnot. But, Work has just been insanely crazy. So again, my sincere apologies for that. We're gonna try and keep getting on track with um, how we're doing things and you know, making sure we're getting these reviews out for you guys so you get them and understand my point of view of the printers. So anyway, let's get into this. So Voxel Lab reached out to me and said, hey, we got a new printer on a market. We're gonna send it to you for testing out and um, you know, we want your, your thoughts, your information, input, however you want to say it, um, on the printer. So, uh, so I've been printing with this, obviously, on and off for the last couple months. And, uh, you know, I, I, I haven't really had any major issues in terms of normal printing. Now, I say that because, unfortunately, my unit came with a damaged screen. Um, on the right hand side, uh, it looks like the screen all the way on the right has an issue where it fl flickers or flutters a little bit. That doesn't necessarily mean that the printer doesn't work. It still does. It, and it prints perfectly fine as long as I avoid that part. So when I do prints, there's some bars that show up there. So that's about the only downfall is it does waste a little bit of resin, but it's not... It's not to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I gotta take, excuse me, gotta take a look at this and replace that. Now, in all fairness, I did reach out to Voxel Lab and let them know that, hey, there's an issue with my screen and we went through a couple steps just to verify that it actually was the screen. Um, so we went back and forth for about a, a week or so um, and kind of came to the conclusion that it was a bad screen. So. Uh, I do have a replacement screen. It is up on my shelf right there. But again, there's no need for me to replace it because while, yeah, it is an issue on the screen, it doesn't hinder it from printing. So just keep that in mind. While, yeah, it, it does have some issues with it, it still prints perfectly fine. So I'm just going to let it roll until that screen, you know, gets worse or something bad happens to it because I really don't see that screen going bad at any point in time uh, for a while because you know it's a mono screen it's uh, it's gonna last for almost 2,000 hours supposedly so I'm gonna keep running it until I have to replace it there's no need for me to replace it right now if if I need to print full build plates well then I'll just have to utilize another printer it's not it's not the end of the world, so I'm um, not saying that you guys have to do that as well if you have an issue with it, but uh, that's just my two cents on it. It, it works the way that it's still intended. Um, I just avoid that little spot, and I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about in a little bit here. But uh, yeah, so just going over the printer itself, this is, um, I believe, another Calent variant, much like the Elegoo Mars and the Elegoo Saturn. Um, and the only reason I say that is because the build is very similar to that. Now, when I say Calent variant, um, so if anybody knows anything about the resin printing world, um, Calent basically corners the market for at least medium printers. Um, they, they kind of contract out to everybody else or everybody contracts out to them to sell them at least parts to build printers. Not necessarily saying that that printer is the same as their, their other models that they had out there or have had out there. Um, but they at least provide a good portion of the parts um, for the printer, the, the mechanics, I would say. Uh, the boards are usually she two boards, so those are sourced from that. And the screens are sourced from wherever else. But for the actual machine, the motors, all the other electronic parts, the LEDs, things like that. It's usually sourced out of uh, Calent. Now, I could be wrong about that, but just judging by the looks of it, you can usually tell, like, who makes what. Um, take, for example, in the FDM world, there's a lot of big-size CR10-style printers that have, like, everything included in the base. 
nine times out of ten, they're going to be ANAP printers. They're just going to be rebranded. Um, I have a couple printers actually over here that are, you know, a different company, and they're actually just an ANAP. That's, that's just... It's the nature of the game. They do it all the time. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying, pointing that out to people, like, if you want to rip up one company, make sure that you know that these parts aren't from another. So, just putting that out there, okay? So, um, so yeah. Just in general, the build quality is just as good as an Elegoo uh, Mars printer. And in fact, it's very, very similar to an Elegoo Mars. Even much so as the build plate setup is very similar to an Elegoo Mars. So you have the spring-loaded style build plates on here that, um, you know, are, are very similar to the Elegoo Mars, and they're a little bit on a smaller side, and the, uh, the actual, I guess, holder, you want to say, is a little different than the Elegoo Mars, but for the most part, it is an Elegoo Mars. Um, the build, um, I'm sorry, the VAT is a slightly different than it, but, um, yeah, for the most part, it's a very similar machine. So if you're looking to get into resin printing, I'll be honest, this is probably your best bang for your buck for at least right now as of making this video in, uh, what is it, April uh, 21st. So uh, I would say this, if you're looking to get into resin printing and you have a budget of $500 or less, this and a wash and cure station, you are good to go. And you can probably even get a bottle of resin as well in between there. Because uh, at one point, these were actually going for about $160. So um, they are very, very cheap uh, resin printers. I'm not saying that that's bad, but it's kind of nice to see that on the market um, when there's, you know, uh, uh, other printers out there that are very similar um, build volumes, I guess you could say, for... A higher price you know some starting at 250 some are around 200 so uh, I'm looking at it right now that's what I was doing I was just pulling this up and uh, as of right now it is back up to $199 but I know they have dipped down to 160 at times so if you catch it at the right time you can get this for an absolute steal I mean it's still a steal at $200 in my opinion so um, I just wanted to show you guys this uh, this bill plate and the issue that I had with the uh, with the screen and you can clearly see um, and I basically you know just kind of put these on here and printed them but you see those two little spots right there that's the issue I had with the screen so um, that's about the only problem that I've had with this printer. Other than that, it's been printing perfectly fine. So, um, I put it through its paces. I've mostly been printing smaller material, so I can't really say, you know, yeah, it prints, you know, full build size volume, but I mean, it's a resin printer. As long as you got your resin exposure settings dialed in, the orientation of the model is good and your support settings are good enough to hold it, um, then you're gonna have a successful print every single time. So, um, and really the biggest one out of all of that is the exposure time for your resin. You really have to sit down and calibrate it properly um, on a resin printer, because if you don't, you're basically not doing anything for the printer itself. So uh, you're just gonna have problem after problem. Um, I do like that it has a max fill line on this. Uh, that seems to be a thing that's trending in the uh, resin printing world with a lot of the new printers coming out. So that's really, really nice because, you know, back in the old days with the Elegoo Mars and the Anycubic Photon, uh, there was no way to tell how much you can fill it. And so people would fill the vat and then the bill plate would come down and fill it even more and it would just spill all over the place. So. That's really nice that they have that feature on there. So, um, but other than that, it's a really, really solid printer. Like I said, it's very similar to an Elegoo Mars. So if you're looking for something in that uh, lower end price range, I do highly suggest getting this printer. I've had no problems besides the screen uh, in terms of printing stuff so far. So, um, and uh, yeah, you, you do use She2 box for the slicing on this does have a she2 board i'm not exactly sure what she2 board it's got i'm guessing it's going to be a v3 board much like the uh the creality boards or the creality machines like the ldr and the ldh 
Um, but I haven't actually cracked it open and looked inside there. Uh, but we do have some uh, some special stuff that we're going to be doing with this printer um, if I can get everything working properly the way that I want to. So uh, stay tuned for a video for that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all it. Uh, in terms of my review, um, there's not really much to say about resin printers, to be in all honesty. I know everybody's like, oh my god, I want to know the ins and outs, details, things like that. But for the most part, resin printers are pretty straightforward. You have a board, you have a light source, you have an LCD screen, you have your build plate, and then the general look. That's about it. About five things. So there's not really much to talk about. Like I said, as long as you got your three things in general your resin exposure settings, your supports, and your orientation of model. As long as you got those three basic things going on, you will have a successful print no matter what printer you have. So uh, I'm just saying that if you're looking to get into resin printing, absolutely, this is probably your best buy right now. Um, because at $199 on Amazon, that's a, that's a really, really good price. Uh, I highly suggest this printer. I've had nothing but good things uh, to say about it, really. Um, and it is a you know a six inch monochrome screen, so you do print a lot faster with it. So um, so yeah, I uh, I do highly suggest that if you uh, if you are going to go ahead and um, and purchase this printer. So. That's pretty much all I got for the review. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and put them down below. Uh, I will provide a uh, Amazon affiliate link down below. Uh, so if you guys happen to purchase that printer, I do get a little bit back. I think it's like maybe 50 cents to a dollar for each purchase. Um, but also you can you know use that link and if anything, you purchase anything through Amazon, through that link, I do get a kickback from it. So. You know, there there are some things on Amazon that kick back a little bit more. Hey, if you guys want to uh, help me out and, you know, give me some money back for the channel so we can do some more reviews of this and get some more printers and resin and whatnot, um, then by all means, help out. If not, not the end of the world. Go ahead and purchase it on Amazon on your own. I have no problem with that. I'm not here to make money off you guys, but hey, it's nice that uh, you guys can buy me uh, tacos for my taco addiction. So... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, like I said, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them below. If you guys liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button wherever it may be. Uh, I think it's down below. Um, and uh, yeah, until next time guys, happy 3D printing.